What does that mean in politics? Well, it means that all private good is subordinate to public good. So therefore, you may be surprised that I, a social democrat, am agreeing with previous statements. But I do, I do agree with it. The, the, the clear um, strength of social democracy is that, as I would say, to the to conservative nationalists, subordinate your nationalism, your conservatism, to having a social conscience. And to the left, who see social, democ social democrats, who see themselves as um, internationalists, think, have yourself a national consciousness as well. Internationalism is a natural step beyond nationalism. Pan-European nationalism is, off, is, is, the, is the way forward because it uh, makes a clear distinction between European pan-European pan -European multiculturalism and pan-European nationalism. And that distinction is that there is... Uh, Europeans themselves have an, have themselves a innate interest in their own well being and their own growth as a civilization. Multiculturalism to me is the is the is a dead end because it, the dead end will end in the death of Western civilization. Just as if we choose the conservative route to Thatcherism, that is the death of Western civilization. If we choose the route to communism. That is the death of Western civilization. The lights are going out all over Europe. The lights are going out all over Europe because of multiculturalism. Social democracy, however, will work whichever, whether there is a mixed, whether it's a mixed race economy or a homogeneous economy. Social democracy will work. But it can only work when there is good capital to work with. And that means education in terms of human capital. It's very important that we see that the European peoples do have a competitive advantage over those of Africa, Asia or even North America or even South America and even Japan. We must have self-confidence in this. We must drive forward educational programs and work programs to give our people the ability to expand, to grow, to progress. Now, as I said before, the state must intervene in some cases to, to get rid of waste and inefficiencies caused by the market. Uh, which lead to unobtainable surplus. Surpluses which are created but yet are too expensive for those people within the market to all um, obtain. Thus it's a barrier to entry into the market. Thus some people within a, in a market will be barred from entry um, because of price. Does price have a utility? Well, if price is, is only a signal to the uh, various actors within and agents within a market, but if price is not, is not correct, then its utility, its ability to function as a signal, is very low. And thus, the government must be able to adjust prices to get to the better utility. So therefore, I'm again saying a social democratic um, a, a viewpoint there. What? Why did not? Why did social democracy and pan-European nationalism not meld, meld before, as they have in the EU? Well, before nationalism did get in the way because of so-called jingoism. The conservative nationalism of the past was jingoistic. We had the money, we had the guns, 
we can destroy them by jingo we can do it that's to paraphrase Rudyard Kipling's uh, poem what we must do is overcome this conservative streak within in nationalism and come to an agreement that the national interest is has primacy over economics economics is a science but it is a dismal science it has many different um, biases within it both from the left and the right it's never quite clear where politics and economics meet or end within each other they, that's why the science of political economy is has grown to fill the gap but political economists cannot simply um, have primacy over the general politics of the population nationalism for Europe as a continent and social democracy as the governing form of of regulation of the market and of the way the government works must be the way that we go forward if we're to solve the problems and what is key is as I said before the overcoming of multiculturalism by a European pan-European consensus a pan-European nationalism that puts the cultural and racial and I said it racial uh, interests and cultural interests of Europeans at the center of social democracy and that will include obviously North America Australia New Zealand Canada to eventually get to the point where I said in my other video uh, the West mark to have a single uh, Western civilization a single Western currency single Western government so to take us through the, from the road to that we will need a bit of nationalism within social democracy and however unpleasant that may seem to social democrats who are multiculturalists well you will just have to go hang because that route is the route to the end of western civilization but social democracy with um, with a common cultural and racial European interest within itself is the way forward not only to have an, a, a continent that has some immigration not completely homogeneous but some immigration perhaps 4% of the birth rate at any one time would be acceptable but it is the way for western civilization to reach those sunlit uplands to reach the glory that it once was and will be again at present time we have the European Union that is a shining light to the world it is the the counter to North America which was once a shining light to the world a counterweight but it's much more a counterweight to the darkness of a Central Asian dominated world a world of India China Indonesia and Russia dominating the world um, order and not allowing free a balance of liberty and equality to occur that is why I say to nationalists and social democrats unite unite together to solve our common problems through social democracy but also to stop this left right nonsense and bring about a nationalism for Europe as and a belief in Europe as a nation state which will be a superpower a hyperpower and and uh, the core of western civilization thank you for listening